Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Man of Cole and I am your Apex Advisor. Today, uh, I thought I, I thought it'd be kind of cool if we did a video on uh, analyzing some gameplay footage of a pretty top tier Apex player. Uh, today we're going to be watching a video, a uh, YouTube video that Real Crafty uploaded to his own YouTube channel. I'll link all of his stuff down in the description below. This is definitely not my gameplay. I'm not taking ownership of that gameplay. This is totally 100% his. And so what I thought we could do today is go over one of his videos on where he only used a Mozambique and a P2020. And he actually, spoiler alert, won the game. And so I just kind of wanted to break it down a little bit and see what we could find out um, that made him so successful in that game and maybe apply that to our own gameplay um, footage. And so uh, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This is my very first YouTube video. Um, and so this might be changing throughout the weeks or days or however long I decide to do this. So any kind of support that you guys give or any kind of advice that you guys give would be greatly appreciated. And let's get into the video. All right, so this is uh, Crafty's video on his YouTube channel. It's called P2020 Mozambique only in Apex Legends. He's also playing with Vis. Uh, if you didn't know, Crafty is a member of TSM and so is Vis. Both very good players. I'll link both of their channels down in the description below. Um, so why don't we get started here? Okay, so right away they're calling out where they're gonna land, which is good to see. So Crafty's on Pathfinder. That's Crafty's main. I got the Moes. Die! Okay. I, I just saw that he got the knock there. So one thing that I was thinking the whole time that this fight was going on, Crafty knew that all he had was a Mozambique, and Crafty knew that he was in a one-on-one. -on -one. And I think from uh, the audio cues that I was hearing in my headset, there might have been somebody up on, into the left here. I'm not too sure about that. Um, and so that might have been in the back of his mind too as he was engaging in this fight. But one thing that he did really well was, it, and Crafty is incredible at this, he's one of the best Pathfinders I've ever watched. But one thing that he does really well is he creates different angles with um, his grapple. And so that's just something that if, if there's any Pathfinder mains out there, if you're a Pathfinder main, um, that's something that you should do. You should watch other people who are very good at Pathfinder and kind of take some, some different cues as to what they do very well with Pathfinder. But one thing that I noticed that Crafty was doing is partway through that fight, he was starting to use it from a long range. And that's definitely not the strength of the Mozambique um, for what little strength that it does have. Um, and so what he did is he just created a different way to engage in this fight. And so that's what ended up letting him get the knock in this situation. Oh my God, he's got purple armor. First blood and it's not us. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so he has a caustic that's coming up. Caustic just laid a trap in front of the door. Oh, that made me. Yeah, I'm trying. Hold on. This guy has gold armor. Oh god. So this is calling out the types of armor that everybody has. Oh. On my way. Did you get him? You did you break that dude's gold armor? I know he's a robot. This needs help though. Oh. Okay, so I was going to say something about what just happened there, but Crafty already kind of took it from me. If you remember that building he was just in, you saw or heard that loot tick that was up top, and Crafty just totally ignored it, and he he started running towards towards Vis. And just now, Crafty, if you, if you heard him say, he's like, yeah, I know there was a robot there, but Vis needed my help. So that's an excellent teammate. Um, that's one of the things that I don't necessarily see a lot of in Apex Legends. A lot of people are just either loot hungry or kill hungry or placement hungry, you know, trying to get as high of a placement as they can, which is fine. You're entitled to play however you want to in this game. But if you really, really want to be a good teammate, then communication and actually listening to your teammates is something that's very important too. Okay. 
Uh, I knocked a light plate over here. I really need the shoddy ammo. Yeah, so right now, Crafty's only got two shoddy bullets. I'm gonna really give you a little bit. Yeah, let's, uh, let's that's two shots. Yeah. Yeah, this purple armor, though, is huge for him. Especially if he's only gonna be using a Mozambique in these fights. Okay, interesting. They're both using Mozambiques. So they're both trying the Mozambique B2020 challenge. Alright, you ready? No, yeah, you're good. Here, I'm gonna drop this one, Charlie. That is awesome communication. That's incredible, actually. He's low, low, low. So Crafty did end up getting some shotgun ammo uh, when he was looting that body. Um, I think I was talking over it. Sorry. Um, but some of that communication that just happened there, you know, they're they're both engaging in one person in one fight. Granted, it's a two-on-one with two of the better Apex players probably in this lobby. But one thing that was that's so, you know, incredible about these two is they already know each other's play style. They, they know what things they need to say in order for the other person to be like, oh yeah, I know what to do now. And so this just says one, meaning he's one shot or one health or however they interpret it, I don't really know. But um, all he really needs to say is that guy's one, okay? And then Crafty knows that, oh, he's one shot. If I put one bullet into him, he'll probably go down. Oh. <laughs> That was nasty. That was that was a hundred health and three shots. Comes back full circle, man. He gets the loot tick that he ran past. See, guys, if you if you are a good teammate, if you listen to your teammates, and if you actually follow through on some of the stuff uh, that your teammates are asking you to do, karma comes back to you. You know, he ended up getting that loot tick that he ran back. <laughs> pass in the first place. Oh, yo, jump it in. Yo, I drop this rough piece here. Come on, ninja. Get right on me. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, so there is actually another team here. Interesting. So they knocked that guy. That guy was a psycho. What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, that guy was just there by himself. That was weird. This right now is the kill leader with five kills. All right, let us go. And if he's only using the Mozambique in P2020, there's the other teammates. Okay, so here's a Bangalore ult, which is, uh, this is. Ooh, that's a Gibby. <laughs> Yo, this is actually going off right now. I don't know exactly how many kills he has, but it's at least six. Possibly seven. Okay, so one thing that I just want to point out here, and I know this is kind of like in between fights, but this is something that's also important if you're trying to be a good teammate. If one of your teammates... Okay, two things. If one of your teammates is actually using their their voice um, chat, like in the game, or if you're in a party with somebody, and they say, yeah, I don't have any meds, and you've got like two med kits, three batteries, you know, six to 12 uh, shield cells, give them some of, some of that stuff, you know? You hoarding all of those things just for yourself isn't going to help your team out nearly as much as if you were to distribute it to the people who need it. For example, if you're in a fight and you have all of your, your health uh, on you and none of your teammates have any of the other health, for example, their teammate who only has white armor, you know, the person with the white armor is probably going to get knocked first out of the people who have the gold and the purple armor. 
And so then you're going to be thinking to yourself, oh, why is my teammate down? Um, you know, why didn't he just stick with us or whatever your, was going through your mind at that time? If you're able to give different things to help your teammates out, it's ultimately going to help you and your team in the long run as the game gets further down, especially if you're in the top 10 like these guys are. Also, another thing, I didn't get to this. If you see that your teammate might have like full shields and no health or full health and no shields, and it's been like two, three, five minutes, maybe you should give them some because that probably means that they don't have it. Or um, if you yourself don't have a lot, maybe just say something in the chat really quick. If you're on PC, type it out. If you don't want to use your voice, uh, if you're on Xbox or PlayStation, maybe just using game chat for a quick second and say, hey, do you have shields or hey, shield up. And if they do it right away, then maybe it's because they just forgot. But if they don't do it, then that probably means that they need some shields. Um, just another thing to keep keep uh, in mind because myself, I've been in situations where I have no health and I'm still running with my teammates because I can't really do anything else. I can't loot because I'll, I'll, I'll get behind my teammates too far. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you want to be a, a good teammate. Okay, so there are two guys right in front of Crafty. This will be interesting. I don't know what these guys are doing. They were clearly getting shot at from behind and they just ignored it. Ooh, that was nice. Oh. Yikes. The thing that's difficult about the Mozambique compared to the P2020, they're both very, um, they both are weapons that require a very like high skill level. But the one thing that's specifically hard about the Mozambique, first off, it's only got three uh, bullets in its chamber or magazine. Okay. Uh, the second thing is it's a very all or nothing weapon. If you hit your shots, it can, it can be pretty good. But if you miss your shots, you're kind of screwed for a little while. Uh, until you can either reload the weapon or switch to a different weapon. But in this case, Crafty's using two Mozambiques. So if he misses four out of his six shots out of the two weapons, he's kind of screwed with this fight. Also, what is this guy doing? Okay. They didn't even get the respawn off. They killed the two guys before they could even get the respawn off, man. I don't even think Crafty took damage there. See right there, Crafty's uh, being a good teammate, dropping some some extra ammo. Yeah, that that is true though. I'm not in Diamond yet, but I'm hearing some horror stories about Diamond lobbies, bro. Okay, so right now, so right there, that was interesting. I'm going to go back just a couple of seconds. So right here, Crafty is just said, where are you guys at? And he turns around and looks for his teammates. He sees that they're they're kind of all the way across the canyon or the gorge or whatever this is called. Um, and so hopefully he's going to take that and process it and say, okay, I need to be more towards my teammates. Crafty is one of the people along with a lot of other good players who can probably get away with being this distance away from their teammates just because they are good enough, they have good map awareness, they have good positioning skills, um, that they can kind of go off and do their own thing for a little while. But Crafty's usually a pretty good teammate. We'll see what he does here going forward. Mm. So now he's got a P20. I'm starting to wonder why this video is called P2020 in Mozambique. Because over halfway through it, he finally found the P20. Okay. This is interesting here. I'm so dead. The Pathfinder's watch. Hey! Okay, so Crafty right there just picked up. The reason why he's at white armor now is he just swapped out armor really quick because he valued having shields more than just having an empty purple shield. 
So in the back of his mind, if he ends up getting through this fight, which obviously he probably does because this isn't the end of his YouTube video. But if he gets through this fight, he's going to go back and shield it up. Sometimes you need to value shield over the actual item that you have. Okay, so some Meaning sometimes you need to value a white shield that's fresh, that has two uh, shield spots that are full, compared to a purple shield that has no shield spots. Sometimes time doesn't allow you to just heal your full purple shield. They're right this one shot. Yeah. Well, that was a whole team. Wow. Yep, see there, he gets his purple shield back. It wasn't even his own, and now it's full. Oh, and there's a respawn right next to them. Okay, so there's three other squads left. One thing that, that you guys can do in your own games, this is something that you can apply right away. Keep, keep track of how many people are left. Not just the squads left, but keep track of how many people are left. If you're not doing this right now, this is something that can easily change how you play out the rest of a game. Um, so right now there's four squads left and there's 10 people. They are three of the 10 people. That is, they're in very good positioning for the rest of this game. Um, and so once you get to 10 people, anything below 10 will come up as a question mark at the end of a game. So let's say it said four squads left and a question mark. That means there's less than 10 people left in the lobby. Okay. So just kind of keep track. If you do see a 10, this is the perfect time to just kind of watch the kill feed. If you're starting to see people die or get knocked or finished or whatever, you can kind of calculate in your head, okay, now there's eight people left, or now there's five people left, okay? Um, that's just something that you can try to apply to your to your own games at the end. Um, it's something that took me a while to do, because um, some of the kill feed stuff is kind of confusing to try and figure out which one is a kill, which one's a knock, which one is so on and so forth. Ooh. Okay, so that was a solo. Actually, no, there were two people there. So now there's eight people left, and there are three of them. There's five other people. Okay, so th so their teammate isn't doing the Mozambique P2020 challenge. It's just Vis and Crafty that are doing it. I may have said that earlier in the video, but I forgot. Old man brain. That's true, he doesn't have any of the hop ups. Oh, yikes, he missed all of his shots there. Oh, he just did that. Oh, he just kind of melted that guy. This is a Bangalore ult that's kind of stunning him right now. <laughs> wow. Yikes. You know, the thing that's making this team work so well is a couple of things. One is their communication. They're they're great at communicating to one another um, where they're going to be, what needs to be done to kill the rest of the squads. Also, their positioning. That's number two. Their positioning is just insane. They know where they need to go, what angles they need to push in order to, to kill people in a very fast and effective way. Um, these guys, obviously, they're on TSM for a reason because they can do those types of things, but um, yeah, very good players. So they might go this whole game without even having any of the, the hop-ups for the Mozambique or the P20. That's interesting. They were that successful without having the, the hop-ups. It's kind of cool. So one other squad left. If you've been paying attention to the kill feed, you might know yourself how many people are left, but I haven't been paying attention. I know, right? I, I, I preach that you should keep track of how many people are left and I don't do it myself. That was a triple take. So he's got 12 bullets in his 
in his chamber, or not his chamber, in his reserve. Oh, he just broke shield. That's one knock. Let's see if they can kill this person before the ult goes off. Jeesh. I want to see the damage. How much damage they did between the two of them with the, the Mozambique and the P20. Gosh, that was like effortless for them. That's insane. That did happen. You're right. Okay, wow. Okay, so it's glitched out, so we're not able to see uh, Vis's damage, but 9 kills with 1,200 damage just using Mozambique and P2020. That's insane, man. That is insane. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Like I said, this is not my gameplay footage. This is all 100% uh, Real Crafty's footage. I'll link his YouTube and his Twitch down in the description below. Uh, if you liked this video, please give it a like uh, and subscribe to the channel. I'm hopefully going to be able to do more of these kinds of videos where I analyze and break down different game footages of different uh, top tier Apex players. Um, I might also do some of my own footage. I might record some of my stuff. If you want to see some of my content live, you can follow me over on twitch.tv slash man of coal. Uh, I try to stream every single day. You can pop in the chat, ask me different questions about Apex, how to get better, uh, anything that, that has to do with Apex really, or life in general. I'm okay with whatever. If you yourself want to, or want me to analyze some of your game footage, hop on over to my Twitch channel. Uh, I'd be more than happy to kind of analyze some of your game footage. You can comment down below if you would like that to happen for yourself. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for, for staying until the very end. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, we'll see ya.